Welcome to Kidney Talk, a program of Renal Support Network, a show that streams health, happiness, and hope to the kidney community. You can download all Kidney Talk shows from iTunes and find a variety of resources to help you navigate this illness at rsnhope.org. Please welcome your host, Lori Hartwell, who has lived with kidney disease since the age of two. Well, welcome to Kidney Talk, everyone. Uh, Today, uh, we're going to be discussing a subject that needs more attention. I've suffered from it. I know a lot of my friends have suffered from it. And we're going to learn a little bit more about it. And we all have had the symptom of itching. But itching goes on uh, to be a medical condition when it's called pruritus, if you've been diagnosed with that. And today, we're going to have Kristen Larson. She's been a nephrology nurse practitioner for 22 years. I, I'm just so appreciative of your dedication and welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Lori. Um, and I am just thrilled to be here. I've been a fan of yours for a long time. Um, Lori Hartwell is a big name in the renal community and you do so much good for all of us practitioners and oh. patients. Well, thank you. I always tell people I'm taller than I look. <laughs> um. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> But um, anyway, so, you know, can you explain what pruritus is? Because, you know, it's it's a medical term. Some people may not be familiar with it. Uh, just uh, give us an overview. Pruritus would be, yes, the medical word for itch or itching. Um, and I use the word itch when I'm, when I'm interacting with patients. Um, we've all had an itch. It's unpleasant. Um, it's, uh, it's a sensation and that you, you want to basically get at and relieve. And the most common way to relieve it is to scratch it because that creates basically a canceling of this really obnoxious, uh, symptom, um, which is so prevalent in the renal community. And I totally agree. I, I, it's too bad you can't see my face because I'm shaking my head as you're talking. We've always known about it. We knew about it 22 years ago when I started as a nephrology NP. And it was kind of like, yeah, they itch. And go on to the next thing. And it's like, now they itch. And no. we're really getting excited. Well, and, you know, I can relate to that because I used to have an itch in my stomach. And it was an itch that the only way could relieve it. And I'm not like I'm, you know, self-mutilating myself. But to s- hit myself in the stomach. Like, just kind of like, you know, it, it was a deep itch. It wasn't it wasn't accessible. And it just gave me relief by not like I didn't punch myself in the stomach. But, you know, just kind of that, like, shock of not really pain. But, um, and that relieved it because I couldn't get to the itch. And I've heard this in other, um, you know, people in the community when they say, oh, they they just have an itch. They can't seem to get rid of. And it can be. I mean, and the most unpleasant place to itch is on your back. (laughs) So that's a whole other whole other condition altogether, because that'll keep you up for days. Um, So can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what causes this? What, you know, what are the risk factors? Okay, what causes it? And we're really within the renal community examining what's the root cause. And we have always been taught it was increased uh, parathyroid hormone. It was increased phosphorus, increased calcium. Um, You know, now maybe there's more players such as um, buildup of toxins, maybe just even an abnormal nerve conduction that's more prevalent in persons with kidney disease. Is it chronic inflammation? Is it an imbalance in the opioid receptors of the body? Um, No one can really put their finger on what is the one cause. So it really becomes a condition, a disease of of exclusion. We rule out other things instead of ruling in things. Well, and I know it's it's interesting because we forget that when your kidneys don't work, um, dialysis only provides, I mean, 10 to 20 percent, I mean, you know, literature says different things of what your kidneys would do. So you have a lot of extra um, toxins in your skin. I mean, at one time when I was on dialysis, I was a couple shades darker. Um, And so this deposits in your skin and can cause a lot of problems because you also get dry skin. Yeah. Um, just so, you know, we're not talking about dry skin here. We're, you know, put lotion on, <laughs> but this is, goes much deeper than that. It truly, it does. And, and I, when I started practice, I worked in South Carolina, which they are blessed with humidity along with heat. Now I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah, 
and we're blessed with abundant heat, but zero humidity. And I will tell you that I go through bottles of lotions and basically emollients. Um, I can no longer buy the cheapest brand in the grocery store. I actually need something that's higher powered with, um, with a glycerin or a glycerol base, um, sometimes a little paraffin in it to basically seal in the water within your skin. And then that is really looked at as, you know, translating to folks with kidney disease. Would this be the best option for your dry skin? Right. And you have to look at all the factors because of the fact that when you're on um, dialysis, if, you know, fluid is pulled too quickly or, you know, you go beyond your dry weight, it it dries your skin out. I mean, it can look Mm -hmm. like leather. It can look uh, so skin is one thing, but pruritus is like a nerve. I just want people to understand the difference. Yes. Yeah. Well, pruritus can be an irritation of a nerve or is it a buildup? of a substance in your skin and there were, that's where we're thinking is it perhaps the calcium or phosphorus or toxins or can it can, can your itch just be a standalone dermatologic a skin condition that you happen to have in association with kidney disease that's not necessarily related however when you look at the chronic kidney disease population as a whole there reporting of having itch is way more common than the general population or the non-CKD. So I guess what my best answer is, stay tuned. We have more data coming all the time and we're really trying to tweeze this, you know, what, what is the needle in the haystack here that's causing the significant amount of discomfort and then paritis is a discomfort because it's just nagging in in this, in a, in a, in a chronic kidney disease person. Well, and I've seen some of my peers. I mean, they literally scratch their skin raw. Yes. I mean, oh. and then that's, you know, that's another problem in itself because, you know, anybody knows if you have any open wound on your body at any place at any time, it is risk for infection. And um, MRSA and every other nasty bug is looking for a place to live. So um, you have to be very, very careful. Yes. Yes. Um, and I, I have seen those excoriations. I want to say it looks like, you know, like, like a plow, like, like, like they've got, like got tracks basically on their arms, basically from where their fingers are scratched in order to try to alleviate that. And then, yes, as a nurse practitioner, I just, I think, oh my gosh, what are we going to do now to prevent infection? And how can we save this precious skin? Well, when, you know, when I was younger, I had a friend that they always cut their child's nails. Yes. Because of the fact that they were like, oh, my God, they'll scratch them. I mean, we got to keep them super short um, because, you know, your nails can be weapons. <laughs> and uh, I don't know why, but I have the strongest fingernails ever. So, um, <laughs> uh, you know, people look at me like, where did you get your nails? And I'm like, I don't know, but I'm keeping them. Oh, I totally agree with the nail thing. In fact, I will I will assess people's hands to look what their nails look like. It is. People um, think I have fake fingernails. Mm-hmm. It's like... Um, Having kidney disease for, you know, what, 55? I don't even know. I can't even believe I'll be 57 this month. Oh, my God. I, it's hard to Good say that. for you. But, you know, hey, um, statistics show those who have the most birthdays live the longest. So I'm proud. Amen. Um, but it's it's very interesting because um, people think I have fake fingernails. And they also think, you know, I have good hair and I have good teeth. Now, the rest of my body is falling apart with kidney disease. <laughs> but, um, you know, I live in L.A. and that's all you care about is your hair, your teeth, and your your, your nails. So I'm in good shape. But uh, so what body part does this normally affect if you're suffering from pruritus? I in the okay, I'm going to talk about what first the literature says. And that's usually the arms, legs, and then the access arm, the arm where the, the fistula or the graft is that was what most common in the paper. I, I love to just get rid of all that and just say, tell me the body part that itches. Right. And I have everything from Palms of hands um, to backs of hands to feet. And a big one is the back. And I want to say the back is the one that the person's on in sitting in a dialysis chair. That's probably the one I see most common. Well, and it's, you know, I, I've been in situations too, and everybody can relate to this. But if you can't reach something to itch it, it itches worse. 
It, it just, yeah. it's, it's just more severe and it takes your whole attention. Yeah. So, you know, it's incredible that um, hats off to innovators who look at all this data and all these little toxins and inflammation and markers and everything because um, it's complex, but it, I, I've heard this drug really works. So let's talk a little bit about uh, treatments people get for itching because I think there's a lot of education that needs to happen in this community of, you know, how, how I mean, I know how I, you know, I have an itch and immediate like, take Benadryl. And I'm like, okay. you know, well, Benadryl, just for the record, everybody, if I ever take a Benadryl, I already apologize because it makes me very cranky. Um, mm. I, I don't know why, but maybe because it makes me so tired, but, um, it's, it's not a good medication for me to take. <laughs> I literally am exhausted after taking it. Yeah. So, but that was, that's what they said. Take Benadryl. It's for an allergic, Benadryl is for an allergic reaction. Uh, yes. And I, and that really for, yes, for, has seemed to be the number one thing to take there again. Um, I am not a big fan of Benadryl slash diphenhydramine. Um, for m numerous reasons. Other things they, that I've seen in the histamine category have been things like cetirizine. That would be like a Zyrtec. I take one of those every day. I live in Utah. So um, it's for allergies. It's not for Yeah, it. allergies. Yeah. yeah, but then allergies, but then translating into that, that it does have some component in helping with itch. It does. And, you know, uh, with allergies, I've noticed, because I don't get them too often, but it's usually your eyes and your nose itch more than mm -hmm. your body, right? That's like the difference a lot. Yes. But um, in, in reading all these articles of basically what everybody has taken, some people took cetirizine and they really liked it. Um, other medications that would be prescription would be like gabapentin and pregabalin. That's Neurontin and Lyrica. And that's um, for nerves. Have, Gabapentin goes right yes, after nerves. Yes, nerves. Exactly. But there again, looking at what could be the component of this itch for that person with kidney disease, would this be a medication that would help them? It's almost like a trial and error because, as you know, your body didn't read the textbook. It doesn't know what it's supposed to do. And sometimes it'll respond to a medication that's less common. Right. So, so there's a new there's a new medication on the market that is to treat um, this condition. So maybe we could talk a little bit about that because I think it's it's good to know all your treatment options. So when you talk to your doctor, if one's not working, you can ask for the other. Um, and you know, it's it's amazing when people cr create solutions to our problems. Yeah, well, I think what Lori, what you're talking about is the medication that's given for persons on hemodialysis. And that's diphelicephalin, also known as Corsuva. Yes. And, yes. And that's the newest medication that's out. It is only at this time approved for folks receiving hemodialysis. And it is given at the end of the treatment during the rinse back. And it's given and obviously three times a week. Um, I do have patients that take it, that receive this. Um, and it has really helped them. I have, I, 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 yes, I have to say I've really seen and the patient, most importantly, has seen great results. One of them said it could hardly sit in the dialysis chair. And now I sit here and she says, I ne it never really totally goes away, but I'm not uncomfortable anymore. So Correct. in her mind, the patient, it's a win. It's just, it's a, it's a home run for her to be on this medication. Right. Well, and how prevalent is itching in the community? Or I guess due to not just dry skin. I don't know if you got the data on that, but you know, okay. how common is that? Oh, you, you're, you read my mind. Yes. I read numerous papers. And what I can tell you in numerous papers is that no one paper is consistent. So wait, 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 wait. You didn't get the medical community to agree. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making a joke. Um, no, so, I, I, <laughs> I hear you, Lori. I'm, I'm we kidding. Get I'm the kidding. Medical to, well, I, I like I to I like to emphasize to people who have this illness that you know whenever you go to a doctor, they are practicing medicine, and they are practicing on you. And everybody has different ways of practicing, and it's 
it's not a one size fits all. So people have to be their own advocate. And that's why I'm just bringing that up with that because a lot of a lot of times people don't agree on how things should be done. And it's just like, and I'm using this term because I like to paint. You know, artists have different way of painting. And one's not better than the other or worse than the other. It's just a different approach. So that's why patients have to be their own advocate. So oh, I totally agree with you. Absolutely. We need to be informed consumers of our own health care. Um, and so getting to your uh, getting to your question, this is what I found. The statistics for persons not on dialysis but with kidney disease would be anywhere from 18 to 56 percent. These are in various articles. And then the persons that receive hemodialysis, um, and that's hemo, not peritoneal, would be anywhere from, oh, I found 40% to 70% or so. My personal, and this is Kristen Larson talking up here in Utah, um, I'm, an, I'm an educator for Roseman University College of Nursing, and my students ask all their persons on dialysis, tell me about your itch. It's an open-ended question, not do you itch. Tell me about your itch. And I would say in the persons that they see and assess and care for, it's closer to 75%. And my thing, my thought in my head would be, this is not a scientific study, but perhaps the fact that the question is open-ended, tell me about it, and that they are going to be an active listener, promotes then the person who has this symptom to really start talking about it and telling you about it. That's just my theory. Well, and I think people just ex- just accept things. You know, they're like, oh, I just got to accept it. And they they stop looking for solutions because perhaps in the past they found no solution. And then, you know, I always say the term learned helplessness sets in like they don't think they can solve it. Um, but you never know what innovation or treatment may be down the pike. Um, you always got to you got to always be current. The, the, the more, you know, the less, you know, that's what I found out. Oh, that is so true. <laughs> it's always something to learn. Yes. Yes. So um, getting back to the numbers, I also too want to tell you that I did uh, see persons in their home with chronic kidney disease when I was a house calls nurse practitioner. And I wanted to say that that really ranged in probably around the 40 percent range of persons in stage three, three B, four, um, not on dialysis yet, but there again, itching was prevalent and um, persons seemed to be very willing, happy, maybe almost relieved to talk about their itch and really have a, have a one-on-one, put your pen down, Kristen, and really listen to what they have to say. Well, it is because, you know, how do you, it's like pain. Come, People come and ask me, what's your level of yeah. pain? One to 10. And I'm like, it's so hard to figure out where you're at. Um, I don't think I've ever said a 10. Um, the only time I said a 10 is when I had both of my knees replaced. Um, that okay, was that would out, hurt. That would hurt. But <laughs> it's a very hard question because you second guess yourself. Like, is it really that bad? I mean, you know, like it's a little bit of mental gymnastics. So how do you determine a moderate to severe itch? Uh, I love to use the, you're, so you're telling me about your itch. This sounds awful. Does it wake you up at night? And that's also too one of the, the kind of the de- denominators that I use or the distinguishers I use for pain. Because if it wakes you up at night, that in my mind is bad. Right. So if your itch is waking you up or if your itch is waking up your bed partner, that is not normal. That is not good. And in my mind, I'm saying that sounds awful. You really have bad, bad itch right now. Or you can't that's go to sleep. Movie. You can't yes, go to or you sleep. Can't go to sleep. Well, I said, you know, I'm going back to the orthopedic analogy, but uh, an orthopedist doctor told me once about you need your hip replaced if you feel pain at night, and I okay. didn't know what that meant, but. Um, what it means is when you're laying in bed, if your your hips start spasming, that's what's happening. That's what's causing the pain. It's stressed out. And he's like, that's when it's time to think about a hip replacement. Because, I mean, and I just thought that was such a great analogy because, mm-hmm. you know, you don't want to do things. But it's like if it's if it's hurting when you're laying, it's, it's already, um, you know, on overload. And so um, I thought that was a a great, like, test to just kind of, like, you know, get out of denial to say, oh, God, I might need another surgery. Your mind plays tricks because 
so it's just like, you know, when you're used to something or you're outside and it's cloudy and you think, oh, it's not hot out and there's a little breeze and then you're sunburned, but you didn't realize how bad it was. Yes. So, you know, you just get kind of used to where you're at. Kristen, what kind of, you know, tests are done to figure out if you have pruritus? There's actually no real like blood test, um, x-ray No, there's really none of that. It's a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning you look at all the factors that could possibly contribute, and then you base a plan or base a diagnosis that this is of chronic kidney disease, the itches. But um, there's really no universally accepted like scale, like a severity scale or a faces scale, you know, with the sad face and the smiley face. It, it doesn't, it doesn't have a definitive test. It's a disease of exclusions. You list all the potential issues that could contribute and start checking them off one at a time. And then you might not even, you might not even have anything hard and fast other than I itch. And you know what? If the patient, the person says that, it's the truth. If I want people listening out there that I experienced this itch. Um, I've had, you know, my parathyroid ectomy. I mm-hmm. you know, was on, you know, I was on phosphate and binders when, you know, you used to burp and, you know, come powder come out of your mouth. So it oh. was like, <laughs> that was back in the like <laughs> um, 80s, <laughs> but in 70s and 80s. But, you know, things change because um, they do a lot with bone oral and mineral management in kidney disease. Uh-huh. And, you know, your skin, and it just makes sense that there could be something, you know, not getting along um, <laughs> in your body that's causing you inflammation. That's what it does. And it's irritating you by itch just with all the different you know, toxins we have, and I don't know, medication plays a role, but I'm sure a number of factors play a role in causing uh, the itch that basically is not a dry skin itch. And, and I agree with you. And, and, and looking at that bone and the mineral, you know, looking at your calcium and your phosphorus, your parathyroid hormone, yes, they can be elevated. But I've also seen people with some really high PTHs or elevated phosphorus, and they deny itching altogether. Get someone with, you know, a phosphorus of four and a half is just jumping in the chair. They itch the bat. Okay, then my mind thinks there's another mechanism that we in the medical community haven't discovered or honed in on yet. But all I can say is we're working on it. We really are. Yes. Well, Kristen, you know, this was very informative because I think people need to um, learn more about all the different aspects of kidney disease. And pruritus is something that can be a reality and there's treatment options. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you need to speak up and ask for help. And also, it's important when you're on a social media board. I mean, I see it a lot. I'm itching. I'm itching. And, you know, share this podcast or uh, share information because I know a lot of people with kidney disease learn from other patients and we don't realize how powerful we are when we share what works for us um, because that can, you know, doctors don't understand. I mean, they prescribe, but they don't actually understand what it likes to feel that itch. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that we speak up for each other. So um, just to kind of wrap up, um, how can people listening learn more about uh, Corsuva and the treatment option for pruritus? Well, I do know that there are studies. Let's start with that because that's, that's really how we get um, information shared and we learn more. And there's it's the KIC study, the KIC study, A-I-C-K-S-T-U-D-I-E-S, KIC studies. And those are available for persons with GFR less than 29 and or in stage four and five chronic kidney disease. As far as learning more about diethylkeflin or Corsuva, I would have you speak with your nephrologist. Um, you can actually Google this, itch and chronic kidney disease medications. It will pop up as well as the, Laura, you had a really nice article in your most recent publication about the itch. And it had like a little back scratcher picture on it. That's got some great information (laughs) too. Take, just take that magazine in. That's what I would do and say, see here (laughs) and circle that website and and that list the study and then from go, go from there. And if, and if they still need help, they could certainly reach out to you or me. Right. Exactly. Exactly. 
<laughs> well, well, if you send us an email, we'll make sure it gets to the right place or we can point you in the right direction. So, Kristen, um, I want to thank you for your dedication to people who have kidney disease. 22 years is um, a commitment. Let's just say that's a commitment. And I'm really appreciative of, you know, renal care professionals who commit to improving our lives. We are all a result of your hard work. So um, enjoy your dry weather in in Salt Lake City uh, before you yeah. know it, it's going to be snowing. So um, we all got to enjoy the moment, right? Absolutely. Well, Lori, thank you. And um, my 22-year journey has been a privilege. I I have loved being a nurse. I've been a nurse for 38 years. I will never retire. So I'm going to be around for another 30 years. <laughs> Sounds like me. I'm like, if I can still yeah. talk, if I can still talk, I, I can work because I love what I do. So um, wonderful. Have a wonderful day, Kristen. Hey, thank you, Lori. Thanks for listening to Kidney Talk, a program of Renal Support Network. Please make sure to find us on Facebook or sign up for our newsletter at rsnhope.org. Kidney Talk is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment from your physician. Always seek the advice of your own health care provider regarding your medical condition.